and I basically talk about anything that has to do with AMLO. And today, it came to my attention that my friend, or our friend, <laughs> uh, was looking uh, or researching on Google uh, as to what they would find in, um, you know, that it mentioned about AMLO. And what he told me kind of shocked me, and I said, wait a minute, I've got to let him know. So I've got him on the line. Can you say hello? Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Caleb. And this is coming, Caliburnio. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. I went yesterday to, uh, to look up for, uh, to look up AMLO on Google. I just wanted to see uh, exactly, you know, what, what the perception of him is up you know, up here in, in, in this, this side of the border. And I was shocked because I thought I would see some stories from the LA Times or, you know, Texas or Houston Chronicle or some, some border cities or something. You know, I would have a, a, a serious interest in, in, uh, in, in you know, uh, in Mexican uh, affairs because, you know, they're a border city. But mm, I, I saw none of that. All I saw were... Uh, one after the other, after the other, was just in, 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 uh, in ascending order of age, the oldest to the newest uh, hit pieces by the Washington Post and some guy named Kraut. And, uh, and it just shocked me that, that there was no, nothing else, nothing about Bernie except these, these uh, hit, hit, hit pieces from, uh, from this uh, uh, journalist. We'll call him a journalist. I suppose he probably went to some kind of school and earned some kind of credential. Uh, but um, I I can't really say uh, that, that he's, he's he's much of a journalist. In fact, I'm going to go do this right now. I'm going to just 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 uh, as, as an experiment. I'm going to open my browser and I'm going to go enter an address. I'm going to just type in. AMLO. So it'll do a Google search. A M L O and here we go. Enter. And it goes and boom. It first of all it gives you the Wikipedia page. It tells you who who he is, which is the president of Mexico. And then uh So I should whoa. So I should then, type uh, uh AMLO in my in my Google search. Yeah. So we'll get the same thing. AMLO. Okay. It was exactly Okay, so then I do see AMLO, sh Mexico shows how it's done. Mexico's AMLO shows how it's done. Yeah. Um, AMLO Lopez Obrador, okay. Wikipedia. Okay. Okay, now I'm seeing, I'm seeing other ones, but they're, they're actually uh, not, very, uh, not very positive. But at least there's something different. This is good. This yeah. is actually better than what I saw uh, yesterday. Which, which bugs me, but at least they've got something else. Journalist challenges Mexico's uh, business insider uh, under fire over migration clamp down. Uh, the end of the world order. Anyway, I was seeing a lot of uh, opinions from uh, from the Washington Post, and here's one: uh, uh, When will the jur journalists push back? Uh, Mexico's got the weakest uh, two years in in their in their. Uh, Oh no, that's a lie. Economy, yeah. Straight out lie, or outright yeah. lie. On January 30th, 2020, they wrote that. Wow. In the weakest two years in office. So I I don't see that on here. Uh, where is uh, that? On the Forbes. Forbes. On Forbes uh, okay, I don't. Anyway, so. So Forbes, I know, always gives um bad information on AMLO. So let's say yeah. Forbes. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, okay, so which one is it? Nice oh, here it is. Down. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what they say. Uh, let's make this. Oh boy. Uh, what is this? I have to agree to do something here. Ah. Uh, doggone it. It won't let me see, show it. I hate that when they do that. I have to agree to something. I don't want to agree to anything with them. Okay. Um, but let's go back to Google. 
Okay. So, so you were saying? I'm saying that that uh, I'm I'm actually seeing different stories now. You know, I think what happens is they send me different stories because they know what my interests are. Because I look up a lot of things on AMLO and I specifically ask for things that are <laughs> more positive, I think. And so when they keep not giving me the information, I keep digging. So I think they're giving me more because they do have like some kind of a system that lets them know what you really want. Um and so, but for the average person that would put a search in there, they wouldn't get very much information. Mm -hmm. So, let me see. So, now they're saying that he's got the, I can't, unfortunately, I can't open up Forbes because they've got some weird lock on there that I can't do it unless I let them access to my, I don't know, something. They want me to get rid of my oh, yeah. protection, and yeah. I don't want to do oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that because then I get all this junk. Your ad blocker. Yeah, they don't want the ad blocker on. So, um, what else might be something we could look at that they're not going to try and do that? Because <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's the problem, though. You, you kind of have to be, uh, you, have, you have to expose yourself in order to, uh, to uh, you know, in order to look, you have, you have to kind of, uh, put, you, you got to have to stick your neck out a little bit. Yeah. So. Well, okay. So you want me to uh, unlock my protection here? Well, I I wouldn't do it. I I, I don't think that you're gonna you're gonna learn anything valuable. No, but I can see what they're actually saying. So I'm gonna do well, it. If if it's worth if it's worth seeing, but obviously it's it's not it's not gonna inform inform you. Uh, see, they any more than they won't let me really see it. Yeah. See, and that's the other at thing. The very, at the very, at the very best, it's going to be, you know. Baloney. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we want to do that. Now, this was a a, uh, a story written by Jorge Ramos. Jorge Ramos also is that guy that writes negative yeah. stories about AMLO. Yeah. So he uh, also has been well known for... Uh, lying about yeah, the uh, what's happening in Mexico, yeah, very yeah, notorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, he's been at the uh, um, conference a couple of times and yeah, and yeah. attacked the president with some stupid questions, <laughs> and it was very yeah. frustrating. Um, so he's more than thirty million Mexicans voted to change for a change the last last election. That's what exactly what they got. President Obrador Amlo, as he is called, uh, travels in economy class and refuses to live in the presidential mansion of Los Pinos. Uh, his main message is against corruption, and every morning at seven a.m. he gives a, Chris, a press conference known as La Mañanera. Yes, it is a sharp contrast with previous leaders. But what is it what Mexico really needs? AMLO likes to think of himself as big his, in historical terms. He defined his government as the fourth transformation after independence from Spain reform period and the Mexican Revolution. But his full control of Congress and his very personal style of making decisions have raised flags among those who don't want an auth another authoritarian populist. Really? Everything is up for vote. <laughs> and as opposed yeah. to the previous presidents who controlled the uh, all branches of government. Yeah, with uh, with the military, you know, You're right. to back him up on, on, uh, on, on any, anybody that, that, that resisted. In fact, there was a lot of uh, mass murders and there was a lot of uh, who dead. Who eventually ended up being responsible for... For the 43 students, did they ever... They still them? haven't... Uh, they said that there was complicity with the government, so they believe it has something to do with the government, but they still haven't given the final results. But it's definitely uh, in uh, en route because they had to restart because a lot of the original... So they, were, they were blocking. They, they were, were actually covering up. And... Mm -hmm, they were covering up. But fortunately, yeah. the family members retained a lot of the evidence 
So they're going back to the family to get the information, and uh, they're finding evidence that, that points to uh, Luna and Calderon and the ex-presidents, you know. Uh, so You heard about something similar that happened in uh, Brazil, too, right? Uh, a, uh, a, a woman uh, uh, activist, she was a gay rights activist, uh -huh. and she was murdered by, uh, by unknown people. Uh -huh. And it turns out that the, uh, that the murderers were, uh, they, they caught the guys did it, and it turns out that they were friends of Bolsonaro, and oh. I think one of them turned up dead. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, watch out. They might kill us. <laughs> <laughs> I say that laughingly, but it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. We're shouting into a bag here. Nobody's yeah. listening, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, but, but when when you get when you get a loud voice and somebody and somebody hears it up, if the wrong person hears it, it's done. Yeah, I know, huh? Yeah. So anyway, speaking of that, uh, we were talking uh, about Google and how they've got um, uh, their interests being protected by. Um, People like uh, Forbes and and uh, and the Washington Post and Kraus, and so what was it that you read that incensed you so much about uh, about AMLO? Well, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, because I know you said, "Wait a minute, they're telling lies." That's what you told me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well. I was just reading the headlines of the uh, of the, the Washington Post uh, editorial. Uh huh. And just on their just on their on their face, they were obvious lies. Uh huh. Um, I I don't I don't uh, have a have an account to read any Washington Post uh, stories, and uh, and I'm not going to subscribe. But well, I can read the headlines and know they're lies. Yeah. Well, see, and also I don't know if you can see this, but. Regarding the Utah situation, that was a really interesting story. Uh, you want to tell them what uh, you found on that? I know you're the one who showed that, pointed it out to me. Well, you're talking about the uh, the the uh, employees, drug yes, thing, where the, uh, the the state of Utah is, is paying its state employees. Uh, they're it's buying them uh, air airfare and. And flying them down to Mexico and paying for their for their prescriptions and giving them an additional five hundred dollar bonus because they saved so much money on uh, on the on the cost of uh, of prescription drugs that it's actually they still save thousands they still save thousands even after all the the airfare and the and the bonuses and and the expenses wow it's still thousands cheaper per person. How is that possible? Well, see what the prices of drugs are here in, in America. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, and that's big pharma. You know, they're yeah. they're making sure that the prices stay up. Yeah, and not only that, but they they, they fight tooth and nail when uh, anybody tries to develop a uh, a a generic. You know, they uh, yeah they, they resist every every effort to. Uh, control the uh, the cost of of, uh, of health really right now what about this whole thing you know um, I don't know I know that one of the things that they tried to hide about AMLO and they're not putting it out because I've told people that you know well you know that uh, health care is free and uh, medications are free in Mexico and uh, and education is free and people are oblivious to it they have no idea you know, how is it that they can hide such important information? Because, you know, I used to say, and I, I, I poke fun, you know how uh, Trump keeps saying, let's build that wall. Well, I'm thinking, you know, people are going to want to be going to Mexico to get some of that free health care and free education for their kids. In fact, um as I understand it, the new college, the new uh, medical college, um, will be able to turn out a doctor in six years, and nurses, a lot of nurses, because they 
what happened is with the previous uh, government, they were only allowing their friends or people with influences into the colleges, and they would turn all these young people away. And so many of them turned to delinquency. And that's one of the things that AMLO fixed was, you know, he gave them uh, grants and opportunities, jobs for the ones that were a little bit older, um, uh, gave them jobs as um, apprentices. And so they're paying people to uh, for apprentices uh, uh, apprenticeship programs yeah. for youth, and they're up at about a million now. A million young people with apprenticeship programs. Are you sending wow. something? I keep hearing this sending sound. Um, I'm sorry, that's uh, my uh, mic running against the. Oh, okay. Um, but um, the the thing was the. Oh, I got distracted. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, the apprenticeship program, right. And and so I think that's another one of the things that, and, and when I said in my title, what does this have to do with Bernie? I think that one of the things that it has to do with Bernie is that they don't want people to know what's possible because um, they're like, well, it's not possible to give a, a free education. Well, let's not say free. Let's say even a cheaper education, you know, because affordable. affordable, right? But they keep saying, oh, it's not possible. And Mexico can do it. And they were like supposedly one of the most impoverished, corrupt countries. They can do it. How come the U.S., who's supposedly like the, what is it, the big the one? The on yeah, the, 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 the strongest world yeah, power. The Yeah. It's, it's insane. Or even when we go outside on the streets and we see these people living homeless on the streets, tons of them. Yeah. And it's, and. People, they've just been thrown away. Yeah. Got no use for them. We got no place for them. By the way, there's thousands and thousands of empty houses all over the city. They're too good for you. Right. Right. It's a sad situation. But um, when we were looking in on um, on the uh, uh, stuff on Google, let's go back to Google, because that was the main uh, thing here. And every time I try to type it in there, it goes to the top, which is weird. But OK, so AMLO um, uh, news. Um, let's see what it says. Yeah. Okay, AMLO the for on the first new government, new revolution. Mexico still waiting as Lopez Obrador. What what are they gonna say? Let's see. A new revolution is uh, waiting. Half a mark. So who wrote this? Because that's another thing. <laughs> a lot of these people. Let's see, Mexico, after his landslide victory last year, President Andres Manuel López Obrador, Mexico promised a staggering transformation in his country on par with independence from Spain and the revolution. Five months into his term, the new Mexico says he is building, looks like an awful lot like the old one. Right. Wait a minute. Corruption. I just, I just thought <laughs> I just saw a, a, a brand new story, one day old, from a site called Counterpunch. Uh -huh. It says, Mexico's AMLO shows how it's done. Let's see what this one says. Who's Counterpunch? It sounds like a uh, like a progressive uh, Let's outlet. see. Look it up. Mexico's AMLO. Mexico's AMLO shows how it's done. Ellen Brown is. Let's see. Uh, this one here, images, um, AMLO, uh, counterpunch.org. Okay. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Okay, let's see what they have to say. It looks good. While U.S. advocates and local political struggle to get their first public banks, uh, uh, chartered, Mexico's new president has begun construction on 2,700 branches of a government-owned bank to be completed in 2021. When it will be the largest bank in the country, 
At the press conference of January 6, he said that the neoliberal model had failed. Private banks were not serving the poor and the people outside the cities. Uh, so the government had to step in. True. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, one moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. But the, yeah, but the point is that uh, he's he's really uh, taken control of the of the economy and uh, and and done what what people have been begging for for years to do. You know, it, it sucks when 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 you live in a in a in a in a little one horse town out in the middle of nowhere that doesn't have a Bank. A bank or anything else, for that matter, or electricity or, or water or drainage, or and these people were just forgotten by the previous governments. They were just, they would say they were going to yeah, do something, they they'd steal up. it. They would, they would say, okay, uh, hire this guy, and like from the treasury, they had friends in the treasury. They'd say, hire this guy, and we'll give you this much money. So they'd give him a loan. Now, the people of that state are indebted to them. They yeah. get to steal the money, and the thing is never finished or built, like hospitals that were yeah. left in states of uh, half-started... Uh, yeah, yeah. Be, uh, they're, they're just self-dealing all, all, all the time on all sides. Right. That's, that's been the, uh, well, you know, Americans have, have done a little bit of self-dealing, too. Oh, and, a lot. And it's it's been, but it's you know it's been more uh it's been more lucrative and, it, and it's been uh you know it's been managed maybe a little bit a little a little bit better. Uh huh. So it didn't it so it didn't uh, uh but, but really come come to think of it they kind of did grind to the uh to a halt right around the same time. Mexico maybe a little bit sooner, but but really this this whole this whole corrupt uh cycle of, of self-healing is, un, is unsustainable. Yeah. It, 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 has, it, it can't, I mean, it, it, can, it, it can last for a certain amount of time, but you run out of, you run out of, of uh, you know, of people to burn. It's In fact, no one else to steal from. You know what? I don't know if you ever saw, but there was this millionaire, look, millionaire, on uh what is that ted talks yeah this was a really interesting uh story uh where he talks about um uh, how it wasn't right to keep ripping off the people plutocrats here he goes this yeah. was a good one look at this I, you probably don't know, probably me, don't know me, but I am those one of those 0.01 percenters that you hear about, read hear about, about, read and, about I and I am by any reasonable definition of plutocrat. Of plutocrat. And tonight, and tonight what, I like to do what I would like to do is speak directly to other plutocrats, to, other plutocrats, to my people, to my because, people it because it feels it's like it's time for us all to have a chat. To have a chat. Like most plutocrats, like most plutocrats, I too am a, I too proud, am a proud, unapologetic, unapologetic capitalist. I have founded, founded co-founded, or, co or funded over thirty companies, over 30 companies across, across a range, of, across range of, industries. of industries. I was the first non-family non investor, non -investor, in, Amazon. investor in Amazon.com. I co-founded a, co a company Quantive called Quantive that we sold the Microsoft, we sold the Microsoft for six point four billion dollars. My friends and I, my friends and I, we own a bank. I tell you this. I tell you this. <laughs> unbelievable, right? I tell you this. I tell you this to show to show that my life that my is life like most is like most plutocrats. I have a broad, I have a broad perspective on perspective capitalism, on capitalism and, business. and business, and I have been rewarded, I have been obscenely, rewarded obscenely for that for that with a life that with a life that most of y'all can't even imagine. can't even imagine. Multiple homes, multiple a homes, yacht, my, a own yacht plane, my own plane, etc., 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 etc. But let's be honest. But let's be I honest. I am not the smartest person, person you've ever met. I am certainly not the hardest working. I was a mediocre, I was a student. mediocre student. I'm not technical I'm at not technical all. At all. I can't write a word of code. Truly, truly, my success, my success is, the is the consequence of spectacular, of spectacular luck. luck of birth, of birth, 
of circumstance, circumstance and, of timing. and of timing. But I am actually, I am actually pretty good, at a, pretty good at a couple of things. One, one I have an unusual, have an unusual high, tolerance high tolerance for risk. For risk. And the other is, and the other I, have, is, a good I sense, have a good sense, a good intuition, good intuition about what will happen, what will happen in the future. And I think that, that intuition about the future, about the future is, the essence is the essence of good entrepreneurship. Of good entrepreneurship. So what do I see, so in, do our I see in our future today? You ask. You ask I, see pitchforks. I see pitchforks. As in, as in angry, mobs angry mobs with pitchforks. With pitchforks. Because That's what I see. Like because people like us plutocrats, because wild people, <laughs> like, wild us people, people like us plutocrats, are living beyond, are living the, dreams beyond the dreams of avarice. The other 99% of our fellow citizens, our fellow citizens are falling, are falling farther, farther, farther and farther behind. In 1980, the top 1% of Americans shared about 8% of national wealth, while the bottom 50% of Americans shared 18%. 30 years later, 30 today, years later the today, the top 1% shares, shares over 20% of national wealth, of national wealth while, the bottom 50 while the bottom 50 of Americans share, of Americans share 12, or 13. 12 or 13. If the trend, if the continues, trend continues, the top 1% will share over 30% of national wealth, wealth in, another 30 years, in another 30 years, while the bottom 50% of Americans, 50 of Americans will, share just will share just 6. Share just six. You see, the problem isn't, see, the problem isn't, the problem that, isn't that we have, that we have, some, some, inequality. have some, some inequality. Some inequality some is inequality necessary, is necessary for, a high for a high functioning capitalist democracy. The problem is that inequality is at historic highs today, and it's getting worse every day. Day. And if wealth, and if wealth power, and power, and income to continue to concentrate at the very tippy top, very tippy top our, society will our society will change from a capitalist democracy, from a capitalist democracy to a neo-feudalist neo frontier society, frontier society like 18th century, like 18th France. century France. That was, that was you know, France, you know, France before, the revolution, before the revolution and the mobs with the pitchforks. The with the pitchforks. So I have a message, so have a message from my fellow plutocrats and zillionaires, and, zillionaires, and for anyone who, and for lives, anyone who in lives in a gated, in bubble, a gated world, bubble world, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It cannot last. It cannot last. Because if we do not because if we do, do not do something glaring, fix the glaring economic inequities, economic inequities in, our society, in our society, the pitchforks, the pitchforks will, come will come for us. For no for free, no and, free open society, and open society can long sustain, can long sustain this, kind of this kind of rising economic, economic inequality. inequality. It has never happened. It has never there, happened. Are no examples. there are no examples. You show me a highly, you show me a highly unequal society, society, and I will society, show you, a will show you a or police state or an uprising. The pitchforks, the pitchforks will, come will come for us if we do not, if address, we do not this. address this. It's not a matter of, it's not if, a matter of if, it's when. It's when. And it will be terrible, it will be terrible when, they come when they come for everyone, for everyone. But, particularly but particularly for people, for people like, us, like us plutocrats. I know I'm a sound, I know like I'm a sound some like liberal do-gooder. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. making a moral, I'm not making argument, a moral that argument that economic that inequality, economic inequality is, wrong. is wrong. What I'm what, what I'm arguing, what I'm arguing is, it rising is it rising economic inequality is stupid and ultimately self-defeating. Rising That's inequality, right rising there. inequality just doesn't just increase our risks, increase our from, risks pitchforks, from pitchforks, but it's also, but it's also terrible, terrible for business, for too. business too. This is what I was talking so about. So the model for us so rich guys should be Henry Ford. Henry Ford. When Ford famously, when Ford famously introduced, introduced a five dollar debt, which was twice the which prevailing, was twice the prevailing rate, rate, wage at the time, he didn't just he didn't increase, just the increase the productivity of his factories. Of his factories. He converted exploited, he converted auto, exploited auto workers, workers were poor, were poor into a thriving into middle class. Thriving middle now class could now afford to buy the products that they, the products made. That they made. Ford intuited, Ford intuited what we now what know, we now is, know true, is true, that an economy, that an economy is best understood, is best understood as, an ecosystem, as an ecosystem and characterized, and characterized by the same kinds of feedback loops, feedback you, find loops you find in a natural ecosystem. A, natural ecosystem. a feedback loop, a feedback between, loop customers between customers and businesses. And businesses. Raising, wages Raising wages increases demand, increases demand which, increases hiring, which increases hiring, which in turn increases, which in turn increases wages, wages and demand and, demand and profits. And profits. And that, and virtuous, that cycle virtuous cycle of increasing, of increasing prosperity, prosperity is precisely, is what, precisely is what is missing from today's, from today's uh, 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 economic, uh, recovery. economic recovery. And this is why, this is why we, need we need to put behind put us, behind us the, trickle -down the trickle down policy that so dominates so dominate both political both parties political po and embrace something I call middle out economics. Middle out economics rejects the neoclassical economic idea that economies are efficient, linear, mechanistic, that they tend towards equilibrium and fairness. 
and instead embraces the 21st century idea that economies are complex, adaptive, ecosystemic, that they tend away from equilibrium and toward inequality, that they're not efficient at all, but are effective if well managed. This 21st century perspective allows you to clearly see that capitalism does not work by effectively allocating existing resources. It works by effectively creating new solutions to human problems. The genius of capitalism is that it is an evolutionary solution-finding system. It rewards people for solving other people's problems. The difference between a poor society and a rich society, obviously, is the degree to which that society has generated solutions in the form of products for its citizens. The sum of the solutions that we have in our society really is our prosperity, and this explains why companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft and Apple and the entrepreneurs who created those companies have contributed so much to our nation's prosperity. This 21st century uh, uh, perspective also makes clear that what we think of as economic growth is best understood as the rate at which we solve problems. But that rate is totally dependent upon how many, how many problem solvers, diverse, able problem solvers we have, and thus how many of our fellow citizens actively participate, both as entrepreneurs who can offer I, I walk around sometimes with this dark feeling of like, oh man, something horrible about to happen here. <laughs> yeah. How are they going to do this? How are they going to do this? I keep walking around, you know, uh, I, I, I feel like uh, I worry. I worry. I really do. I feel like these, there, there's nothing beneath these people. Yeah. Like what happened with Bernie in uh, Iowa or you, what was it, Iowa? And then, yeah, yeah. oh, what's happening right now with Bernie? Tell us. Well, they're they're having the, uh, the New Hampshire primary tonight. So, in a few hours, they're going to start voting, and uh, and if uh, if Bernie does well in New Hampshire, uh, 
is going to uh, is going to put a lot of pressure on everybody else, especially Joe Biden, who uh, who really needs to really needs to get some 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 delegates because uh, I think he came in fourth in uh, in Iowa. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, if he doesn't do better, uh, they're gonna they're gonna ask him to roll it up. Yeah. And uh, and then with uh, with Buttigieg, Buttigieg has got money to keep fighting. Even yeah. If, even if he loses badly. Uh huh. He's gonna. But that's actually that's what kind of what we're hoping for. That he loses we're badly. Hoping, no, 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 no. We're hoping that he loses and stays and keeps losing, but just keeps taking enough delegates to, oh. you know, to, 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 to make a, uh, make Bernie bleed look big, you know? Okay. Like if, 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 if all the Buttigieg delegates go over to, to Klobuchar or, or to Biden, well, that, you know, that, that gives another, another, uh, candidate some, some steam. Some uh, some some numbers, you know, and, and we're trying to keep everybody, all the other candidates low, and one candidate riding the wave. But what whatever happened with that uh, election that they tried to? Um, oh, that thing in Iowa. Uh huh. Okay, the count in Iowa is is a, is going to be uh, a little bit weird. I, I I don't even know how how to explain the uh, the the caucus uh, system. But somehow, after the uh, after all the counting, uh, Buttigieg ended up with uh, with two more uh, delegates, uh, what do they call it, uh, delegate equivalents or something, than uh, than the Sanders. But that's because the math was done wrong, and they they've acknowledged that the math was done wrong, but they can't change the. The, the final certification. What? Without, without, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me finish it. It's plain. You stop me and then I'm going to lose them. Okay. I it again. Okay. So they, they, they have read them. They have, uh, they have uh, uh, looked, looked over them. They have found that the math was wrong and that, uh, and that the results then are, are, are incorrect. However, because they are signed and certified, they cannot change the the the, uh, the final uh, count on the on the uh, on the uh, state uh, ballot or the or the state uh, election, the, the primary election, until uh, they they re canvass and and do the whole thing, uh, have the people assign them and have them go over their math again and and correct their stupid mistakes. Until that's done, Bernie doesn't get his delegates. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen before the elections, and Bernie's going to have his delegates. So don't worry about it. Yeah, but like you said, they stole this thunder. Yeah, they did, but it doesn't matter. Because now all it did is it left us a big stink of shit all over Pete Buttigieg. Look at what word what they left on him. Shit all over. Well, good. Yeah. But and look at... And, and so, like, for the first couple of days... When everybody thought he might have won uh, Iowa, uh -huh. he was he was he pulled up like eight points in, in New Hampshire, and then it became obvious that he had ripped it off, and then the stink of shit hit him, and then uh, and then it, it, he completely dropped off. And he's not he's he's pulling a third, I think, in, 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 in New Hampshire. Wow. And I'm not sure about that. What the what the let me look up what the what the numbers are in New Hampshire right now. I can look them up on Twitter. They're real good about that. Mm -hmm. shit. But uh, he took he took a real a real hard hit once once. What do I put on Twitter to look it up? Once the smell came up, uh, look up uh, Buttigieg on the uh, on the Boo. Know, microphone. How do you spell that Buttigieg? <laughs> B u t t i a. Or just just look in the news. Let's see. It'll, it'll Buttigieg, right uh, uh, New Hampshire, or mm -hmm. Pete Buttigieg, hit his uh, or, yeah. or or which one? Let's see. Yeah, look, 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 How about this one? New Hampshire, latest New Hampshire. Look at this one here. Uh, the success of Pete Buttigieg in Iowa and his rising popularity in New Hampshire gave me hope. I want Pete to be our nominee. For me, he's the answer to a prayer. Oh, Pete Buttigieg. Oh, yeah. these people like him. Yeah. They have hope. Yeah. Oh. 
Wow, it's crazy what happens when national lies call you a winner for a week and refuse to talk about the guy who got more votes. <laughs> Bernie is not going to allow Pete's billionaires to buy his election. Pass it on. People are uh, are very aggressive, and that's the other thing is that uh, uh, the Bernie Sanders has got that he's got some monsters, some fucking pit bulls. Uh, you know, he's got an army of pit bull uh, of uh, Twitter and uh, and uh, Instagram and everywhere trolls. That a minute somebody comes up with some bullshit, they they they, they swarm them and shut them yeah, down. Yeah, that's right. They don't let no bullshit stand. You bring up your bullshit and you're going to get slammed Look at, right down. Look at, they highlight Buttigieg 21%, but they don't highlight uh, Sanders 28%. I know, they just forget that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it happens. You know, it's like, it's like, Wow. Ah, gross. Wow. 11 hours ago, Pete Buttigieg built his loudly into a microphone at a New Hampshire town hall. Oh. <laughs> I can't watch another segment in which Sanders, Buttigieg, and Biden are featured and Warren and Kobocha are brutally, brutally disappeared. Yeah. Uh, that's the other side, huh? Uh-huh. That's the, uh, that's the women that, well, oh. unfortunately, you know, we, uh, we tried that. It didn't work out well. Ah, oh, Buttigieg, 25%, Sanders, 24%. Oh, new poll came out. Ah. Where? Where? That says Where? right there by uh, What's the time? Steve, uh, that was February 7th. Yeah. <laughs> you need one newer. You need one newer. Right, that's, I'm going backwards, or am I? Yeah, yeah. February yeah, 8th. Yeah, because what's happening 21 is, hours. That, is that... For a couple of days there, he saw a spike in his in his polling, and he, and he said it was work. The, 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 the Iowa thing worked, and then all of a sudden, the the, the truth starts leaking out, and uh -huh. he's starting to see what 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 kind of fuckery they had done. And he was all oh, fuck this guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the problem is that by the time they realize they've been had. <laughs> It's so frustrating. Oh my gosh. And then people have probably even donated to to his campaign and stuff. Okay, I better go cuz I got to go to work. But anyway, I thought we'd do this little short uh video before I took off. Have okay. a great day. You too. Okay, bye. <laughs>